Hello, it's Alina from Exclamate Mastery here, and I've had some really great comments on some of my recent videos uh, suggesting what we should be talking about here in the upcoming month or two, and I think a really good suggestion is what not to do in Sketch. So there are some comments that I've had um, from people that have done things the wrong way and plotted along until they figured out, oh, that was the right way to do it. And so they went, uh, had some good feedback on how I should share the right way to do things so that you guys don't have to go through all that headache and frustration and just how to do it the right way the first time. So today we're going to talk about how to create a room and what you should be doing to create a room next door. And it sounds like a beginner topic, but there's a lot of ways you can really screw this up. Trust me, I've been there, done that. So let me show you the right way to create a room and then a room next door. And um, if you don't deal with sketch, feel free to just skip this video. That's okay. I know I have some roofing exterior people that uh, don't deal with interior sketch, but it is a good topic to review if you are ever going to sketch in the future. So let's go take a look at what not to do in sketch. So let's take a look at the wrong way to do it, and then I'll show you the right way to uh, build these rooms next door. And there's a myriad of issues that happen when you don't use the right tools here, because Xactimate is an estimating program. This is not CAD. There's a lot of rounding going on in the background here as it's trying to calculate linear feet, square feet, cubic feet even. So you can screw it up pretty royally if you don't uh, use the right tools. So let me show you a couple instances of what you should not be doing. So if you go ahead and expand this room here, let's say you want a living room and then a kitchen, and uh, you expand the room, and of course you have to account for the four inch wall thickness here, right, on either side. Then you grab your wall, and you're trying to do your mental math, okay, I want my, my uh, living room to be 14 foot, so that looks good. And you throw that wall in there, well, it's actually going to account for the two inches on center, and it's going to attribute that to your living room. And now your kitchen is also going to be off. And of course, you could just go ahead and move the wall. I understand that. But by creating rooms with this wall tool, it actually is creating, um, it's, it's not only cumbersome, right? It also can get a little bit glitchy. And I've seen some problems, especially if you have some offsets in rooms and you divide it this way. There's these little uh, diamonds here that for some reason... Xactimate, when you use that wall tool, doesn't either quite connect or something just happens in the background of the program that starts to throw your square footage off. So in other words, it might not meet properly, or if you have a more complex room, it's not cutting off the square footage properly. It's just not a great way of doing things. First of all, it's cumbersome, like I showed you, trying to figure out the math of the on center. And then uh, I have seen this really glitch out using the wall tool. In fact, I only use the wall tool to build pony walls or half walls. And that's for another video um, here. You can build, um, sh you know, just like a, like a, if you're in a bathroom and there's a small wall without a door that hides the, uh, the toilet area. Those kinds of things are great with the wall tool. But to create rooms, uh, to make angled walls and things, the wall tool really is uh, quite hard to use and there's better tools out there to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete the whole room so that I don't have any glitches going on. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild a 12 by 12 room here. And we're still trying to achieve that kitchen to the right. And we want a 14 foot living room here on the left. So what another uh, thing that I've seen people do is they'll go and they'll grab another room. And that's all well and good. That's fine. It, it, it works for the purpose that uh, you have at hand. But again, you're going to have to resize things and it becomes cumbersome. So I'd have to delete that guy off. Go ahead and make this 14 feet, then pull my room in. Extra clicking, extra time, and uh, also uh, let's talk about preferences. So if you have a house with 10 foot ceilings and you need every room to have those 10 foot ceilings, if you build your rooms in the manner that I just did, you're going to have to go and create every room of course by itself and change all of the properties in each room to 10 foot. That's a time suck. You're wasting a lot of time by doing that, right? So in the proper way to do this guys at the end of the day, what I'm trying to show you here 
Oh, one more improper way that I've seen done again with the wall tool is you'll start your wall and you'll try to build the room next door. This is very problematic. As you can see, I don't really know where to turn the corner here uh, to meet. Now, I just happened to do that. That didn't usually happen to me, but it's um, there it is. There's the offset I'm talking about that causes that glitch. So sometimes this little area, see that little cross there? Um, that is off just enough to throw some really crazy wrenches into the program. So using that wall tool again, don't uh, don't recommend that. So those are probably the three worst ways I've seen rooms created next door. Now I've got this room here set at 10 foot for the ceilings. So what you are going to want to do is use your control key. So you're going to want to hold down your control key and hover over this handle. So I'm holding down the control key first, then I'm hovering over the handle. Then I can left click hold and drag next door. And this is the best way we've found to go ahead and create the room. Then I can let go now that the room is created, click in the dimension and type it in. What this does is takes on the properties or the preferences of the room next door. I shouldn't have been saying preferences, guys. It's properties. Sorry to use the wrong terminology there. But the properties of the room is what's going to determine your ceiling height. So there you see, not only was the room created quickly, it also took on the prep properties of the room next door. So if I had a very custom style house where I had uh, maybe six inch wall thickness, uh, different types of ceilings, all kinds of fun things, I could just break it off of the room next door and it would take on those properties. Now, what if the room next door had an eight foot ceiling? That's when I'd go ahead and grab a new room because I want to clear those properties. I do not want it to take on the properties of the, the main room. So there is a reason to go grab a room, but know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I, I would do that just because I have an eight foot room height, uh, ceiling height here in this bedroom next door. So learn from my mistakes. I've gone through all of them, trust me, been there, done that. And uh, try to avoid using that wall tool unless it's a short wall or something that you're trying to create. And then use that control key to create the room next door when needed. And only use the room tool to add another room when you want to clear those properties. If you like this topic and want me to continue with what you should not do in Sketch, like this video and comment below on any frustrations that you're experiencing and uh, maybe some experience that you've gone through that you've had to uh, plod through and, and figure out uh, that would help others. So if you have any of those kinds of topics, please comment below. Also subscribe to this channel. We update every Tuesday and have new content for you here. If you're interested in what we do as the Xactimate trainers, go to www.xm8mastery.com. We specialize in training restoration contractors in using Xactimate. So take a look at our website. Hope you guys have a great week in your business and I will see you next week.